I am very delighted to welcome a young leader, but a very important personality for the future of Europe, Prime Minister, or as they say in Italy, the President of the Council of Ministers, Matteo Renzi of Italy, to the annual meeting. Prime Minister, I should use the opportunity uh, to tell you how impressed we were by the cultural message of your country yesterday. It was a very moving moment, and I'm sure we will be impressed by your political message uh, just uh, to follow. Following our meeting and uh, discussions, I must say how pleased we are to have such a strong presence from Italy this year. Not only you, but uh, members of your governments. And Prime Minister, I should also uh, tell the audience that you just celebrated last week a very special birthday. So congratulations. You assumed leadership of Italy's government in February 2014, so just a year ago. And we all know that it has been an incredibly busy 11 months for you coming at a particular critical time for Italy, for Europe, and for the world. You took office with an ambitious reform agenda and have successfully passed, and that's not always recognized internationally, the Jobs Act in Parliament and the Senate as a key pillar of economic reform. You also have tackled political and institutional reform in the justice and parliamentary system, and at the same time, you have also held successfully the presidency of the Council of the European Union. Prime Minister, your vision, your usefulness, your resilience, your energy are welcome in Europe today. At this year, at our annual meeting, we all know we live in a rapidly changing world, and Italy, as a member of the G8 or as a member of the G20 as being one of the 10 most important economies in the world still have a large saying as far as our future is concerned. So, Prime Minister, the floor is yours to be followed by a conversation with my colleague, Philipp Rösler, the former Vice-Chancellor and Minister of Economy of Germany. Prime Minister. Thank you so much, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen. So after the birthday, I'm out of young global leader of Davos. I finished because uh, over 40 is uh, finished this, uh, uh, this time. But um, I'm uh, really, really glad to be here, really appreciated your uh, invitation. Also, if not very easy, speaking uh, about the future of my country. Because you know, and uh, you listened yesterday, while Andrea Bocelli uh, showed every uh, quality of the lyrics, music, music uh, of uh, our tradition, uh, how many important is the past in uh, our country, an incredible country, rich of uh, culture, masterpieces. It's not very easy to discuss about the future, but it's absolutely an enthusiastic moment for our country. This is an incredible uh, window of uh, opportunity in Italy today. So I know there are a lot of risks. There are a lot of risks in Italy, in Europe, around the world. Not see the risks is stupid for, for a politician. 
But transform risks in uh, opportunities is the quality of leadership. And every year, every season, every era presented a lot of risks. I was born in 1975. Italy is in the period uh, with a great growth, but a lot of problems, for example, of the ter terrorism inside our countries. Europe was a place without democracy, without a strategy for Eastern, uh, European institutions. 1975 was exactly the moment in which for the first time it was decided the direct election of members of parliament in Europe. And if you think what was divided between Western and Eastern blocks, so every season, every era presents risks. And also today, we see a lot of problems, of difficulties. But I believe this as a particular opportunity. And I think the role of politician must be that, seize the moment. I use an expression that comes from uh, Roma, ancient Roma, carpe diem. This is exactly the moment in which we can show us the future after a lot of uh, difficulties. So very, very briefly, I think this is a moment, uh, first of all, in my country. Italy needs an incredible ref season of reforms. And the future is uh, started. I'm not here to present a future of tomorrow. For my country, the time of future is today, not tomorrow. We started uh, with the change of labor market, with the fiscal system, tax reforms, with the civil justice, with a solid and strong ability to innovation of the civil justice uh, with the, 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 the innovation technologies uh, in the court. And I believe absolutely important uh, the new approach in the public administration. Because I believe our enemy is a tape of bureaucracy. And give time clears and a possibility to ensure the investment for Italian entrepreneurs and uh, international capitalists is one of the most important things. But at the same time, we presented in the first year of government a constitutional reform with more than 40 articles, one third of uh, Italian constitution we changed because we think constitution is very important, it's very beautiful, but we need a constitution for the future, not only for the past. And a new electoral system to give finally also in Italy the possibility to Choice the leader for five years. My government have in front three years of governments. I think we must absolutely create the condition because we'll be clear the winner as the uh, leader of the country for a period, uh, a stable period, and not with the change, continuous change of, uh, of government. But in this, uh, in this uh, um, job, we are very, very, very happy because we have a lot of Italian people who believe the place of Italy is not simply a museum. If I think about the future of my country for my children, I don't imagine to describe Italy as a museum. I appreciate it museum, quality, culture, and lifestyle. But I prefer image my country as innovation lab for my children. And for that, we need a different idea of Europe. This is the second big point. A different idea of Europe for Italy come after structural reforms. 
because if we wait by European friends and colleagues, the ability to solve our problem, we are finished. We must make our reforms because this is important in our country. But we must also say very clearly, European direction is not in economic the correct direction. I participated as my colleagues to Brisbane summit of G20 in the last November. Every continent, every country spoke about the necessity to invest in a growth. Every country, Europe apart, Eurozone apart. Eurozone spoke only about austerity. So I think it's absolutely important to maintain attention to budget, reduce the taxation, invest in a different idea of relation between citizen and the leadership. But I think also this is the time in which European direction stress with more attention the importance of growth and public and private investments, not only a discipline of austerity. For this reason, I think the first steps of new commission and the discussion in the next days of a European Central Bank, and uh, let me be very clear, I respect the independence of the European Central Bank, could help Europe to give a message of new in the economic direction. But Europe is not simply an economic community. I spent the January 11 uh, Sunday in Paris with uh, other colleagues after the terrible attack to the capital of France and one of the most important capital uh, of Europe and of the world. I spent with other colleagues and I felt, I felt the idea very clear. Europe is not simply Euro. Europe is not simply a currency and a budget policy. Europe is, first of all, an idea who ensures 70 years of peace, 70 years of uh, prosperity, of stability. And so for this reason, I believe absolutely important that Europe could be in the next years not simply the last, but the place in which we can give a message of innovation in the economics and, and also in the culture and in values and in the ideals. This is the request to come from uh, around the world for Europe. Uh, if you think this is the moment in which uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine, but also Syria and uh, Iraq, but also Libya, very important uh, discussion, uh, uh, show to everybody the real importance of uh, a uh, very strong idea of Europe around the world. I think if we combine together the necessity of structural reforms in economy, the necessity of change of mind in the, the European people, and the necessity of a new international order, we can give a possibility to this country and in general to an idea of politics as a possibility of solve problems. So I conclude exactly from the same point of the start of my speech. Yes, there are a lot of risks. In a part, new risks, international terrorism, idea of the lack of sustainability. But I believe if finally the leadership is, uh, are able to invest in the future, not as a problem, but as an opportunity, we can finally come back to the message very, very significant to, to our citizen. Carpe diem means exactly that. I can speak about commodities, about the relation between euro and dollar, but the, 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 the possibility to come from the new, the new reform in Europe. This is very important, but not crucial. The real crucial point, the key point for the new Europe and for the new 
Italy is image, an idea of the future focused on uh, the ability to invest in the new generation and not simply to maintain the traditional approach in which uh, future is a problem. And if this could be possible, I think Italy is a great country, not for the culture, not for the values, not for the music, but it's a great country because uh, Italy in the past was the place in which were possible invest in innovation. And I believe for my children, Italy will be an innovation lab and not a museum. And this is the reason for the which we serve this country and for the which we change with the structural reforms, the traditional country, very beautiful. But the best moment for Italy is not yesterday, it will be tomorrow. So ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister, thank you very much for this impressive speech first. Second, you mentioned a lot of reforms and you achieved a lot in nearly one year. Some would say you achieved more than all your predecessors in the entire mandate. For example, reforms such as the reform on the labor market. And now please, Prime Minister, let us ask, what is your next reform high on your priority list to improve Italians' competitiveness? I have a long list. Uh, labor market, yes, uh, realized uh, fiscal system, uh, public administration. Uh, I prefer school and education and the university reform, constitutional reform, electoral reform. But let me be very clear. I think the most important structural reform for Italy will be credibility. Because we lost a lot of opportunities in the past for lack of credibility. We lost, uh, we, we, we lost a lot of opportunities because the government changed, because uh, uh, we don't respect, we didn't respect in the past every um, deal. So this is the time in which very important labor market, very important justice, very important uh, uh, public administration, very important education, but the first structural reform for us will be the credibility, and the credibility for Italy is the key point for the future. Great, particularly because you know the headline is new global context, but the meta message of this annual meeting is how to deal with the decline of trust. So it's excellent to hear something about this. And you have been successful on your national level with your national reforms. But at the same time, last year was the time, the semester of the Italian presidency of the EU. And you have been successful as well, given the you know, new interpretation of the Growth and Stability Pact. And traditionally, the annual meeting is a place to strengthen our hope into Europe, you started in your speech, and particularly into the Eurozone, given all the entire discussions like Greece, incoming elections, like the exchange rates of the currency, given here in Switzerland. So my question is, how can you foster our trust into Europe and the Eurozone? I'm not very happy for the results uh, of presidency uh, of Italy. I'm, very, I'm not very diplomatic. And so uh, I think the results are 50% good and 50% bad. Uh, why? Because. Uh, we convinced the other colleagues to invest in innovation and in growth. The pact of stability in the bureaucratic expression of Europe is not pact of stability, it's pact of stability and growth. But in the past, they cut growth and they cut the G of growth. So we come back to the importance of growth with the investment plan of Jean-Claude Juncker. We come back to a new role, I believe, for the European Central Bank. We try to uh, combine together the necessity of good result for the budget with the, 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 the attention to, to, to investment and growth. But I believe uh, uh, Europe in this moment uh, must change the red tape of bureaucracy. If Europe is only bureaucracy, Europe is finished. 
So I think uh, the Gasperi at the now or the, 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 the or Mitterrand call uh, didn't build Europe uh, to become a place uh, of bureaucratic discussions, but for an ideals and for economic interest. Now I think 12 months in front of us will be crucial because if we give an hope with the European Central Bank, if we finally concrete the process of investment of Jean-Claude Juncker, and if we reduce the spread, the real spread in this moment is not between Bund and the Titoli di Stato. In this moment, spread is the dreams of the citizens and the, is from the expectation of the citizen, able young uh, citizens, and the concrete results of European leaders. If we reduce this spread with a different approach in a bureaucracy in Europe, I think we will win. For the moment, I think is 50% 50-50 uh, as a result of Italian presence. Okay, so thank you very much. So after discussing the Italian reforms, the issues on the European level, allow me a more personal question as a last question. So the annual meeting is always about leadership. And here in the audience, in the respected audience, we have a lot of leader, business leader, political leader, leader of the civil society. And they are here today to discuss the new global context and all the challenges we are facing, the crisis and the economic challenges. So I would like to ask you as a leader of an important country like Italy, an important region like Europe, would you share one of your leadership moments you have had in the past in your new role as a Prime Minister of Italy so that we can learn something for all the issues, all the challenges we try to address with this annual meeting? It's not easy to, to, to give a um, brief answer. I, I think that uh, um, this is a moment in which uh, really we can build uh, of new international order. Really. Really in every part of the world. And I, I know it's not easy. If I believe about, if I think about Libya, I know the new international order is not very clear. Because three years ago, NATO decided to strikes in Libya. And now the situation, and it was a uh, good to, 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 to remove a danger and a dangerous uh, uh, leader. But now, if I think about Libya, I know this is the place from the which we can receive a, a global attack because a lot of instability in Libya could be a problem for every, every, every country in Europe. Just one example. So I know there are a lot of problems, but I believe in face of the new challenges, I think politics come back. This is very important. For a lot of years, maybe somebody also here think, oh, the future is economy. It's not correct. It's not true. Economy is very important, but without political leadership, we are not in condition to invest in a different world. So my personal point of view is that after a lot of events, also the last event in Paris, there are the ability to understand finally politicians and politics come back to play a key role. Obviously, this means that we must absolutely change laws and change uh, uh, situation, difficult situation, but also give a vision. And uh, exactly this is the strategy today. Uh, my country is famous around the world for the division in every city, not only in the soccer uh, stadium, but uh, in the discussion, in the public debate, uh, uh, Italy is famous as uh, a country of divisions. I hope Italy could uh, come back 
offer a vision, not only a division. A vision focused on the new Renaissance. I was the former mayor of Florence. Renaissance was decisive for economy, for culture, for ideals. One decided to invest in the quality of values and in the quality of a human being. I hope this could be a period in which a new Renaissance could change the situation around the world. Obviously, depend on the quality, on the dreams, but also the concrete projects. I'm not believable if I don't change structural reforms in my country. We started, now is the time in which we must implement these reforms, but combined together, concrete and the dreams is the only way today in the difficult times, but also in the exciting times. So thank you very much, Prime Minister. And we are just in time first. Thank you very much. That's For Italy, is not normal. So well, that's a question <laughs> of credibility. So I think we, we delivered at this at the moment. <laughs> and second, so I wish you all the luck for your people in Italy, for the people in Europe, and for the people on a global level. Thank you very much. You are the new face of Italy. You are the leader. And hope you see you soon, maybe here on the stage at our next annual meeting. Thank you very much. Good deal. Thank you.